Well, in short, Charles, they're terrified. As you mentioned, they really have nowhere else to go. Many of these people have been displaced not once, but two, three, four times. More than half of the population of the Gaza Strip is currently in Rafah right now. And as you said, they really have nowhere else to go. But it's not just that. They don't want to go. They are fearful of a repeat of history, of the Nakba, Arabic for catastrophe the violent and forcible dispersion of the, pop, of the population of the Palestinians from their homes all throughout what is now Israel and the Palestinian territories. So they're worried about history repeating. That was a seminal moment in the Middle East. It was the root of the conflict as we know it now. And, you know, it's one of the reasons why the Egyptians and other neighbors of the Israelis also don't want to accept these Palestinians, not because they don't want them, because they're worried that they will create facts on the ground, that they will be permanently displaced, just like they were in the Nakba, and they'll never be allowed to go back. Now, our team on the ground in the Gaza Strip have been risking their lives, and I say that sincerely, for the past several months, trying to get us information and footage from Gaza. And here is our report from last night. A refuge waits for war. Israel has said it's about to turn its guns on Rafah, a city in the southern Gaza Strip, where previously many in Gaza had been told to flee for safety. You said this is going to be a safe place. How many times did you lie to us about this place is being safe and then turning back and bombing us? Now among more than a million here, fear is spreading, along with starvation and disease. We've been hearing that they want to come to Rafah just like every city in Gaza, and we're so scared we don't know where to go. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ordered his military to prepare a plan to evacuate civilians here and destroy what's left of Hamas, calling Rafah a last bastion for the terrorist group. Rafah is uh, just two streets. If they bombed one of them, thousands of people will die, and we might be one of them. These satellite images show how a sprawling tent city has expanded on Gaza's border with Egypt. Israel's bombardment of Rafah began two weeks ago. A preview of the horrors that might await the displaced people here. Dozens have already been killed, the UN sounding the alarm. We are extremely worried about the fate of civilians in Rafah. It is nearly impossible to, for us to protect them uh, from tank fire, from artillery shells. This week, President Biden voiced rare disagreement over Israel's attacks on Gaza. The conduct of the response in the Gaza Strip has been over the top. So, Charles, you can hear that despair and hopelessness, but it's not just aid agencies who are warning about a humanitarian disaster that's about to unfold in Rafah. It's also now the Egyptians. They've said that they, if the Israelis turn their guns on Rafah, on those last, that last remaining refuge for these people, uh, then they might cancel the peace treaty that was really the foundation of peace in the Middle East. Israel and Egypt had that first, that Egypt was the first country to have a peace treaty with Israel, the first neighbor. And it really was, uh, if this happens, if they cancel that peace treaty, it could reset the balance of power region-wide. Charles.